Greetings everyone, welcome to Advanced and this is a game from 1859, this is a game from London and this is a game from Simultaneous Exhibition and if that was not insane enough, this is a game from a blindfolded Simultaneous Exhibition played by none other than the legend himself, Paul Morphy versus Lord Cremon and it was held in London. So here, I'm not gonna keep you waiting for long because this is one insane game and here Morphe is with the white pieces and you know what happens when Morphe plays with the white pieces. He starts with E4 and here E5 by Lord Kumon and here Morphe goes for the insane F4 going for the King's Gambit and they have Bishop to C5 but just this Knight to F3 and here once again from the opening you have to go for this for this D6 but here just Knight to C6 was played and out of the opening it's just a difficult position to play because here you could go for this very nice knight captures and you'll be just simply be up upon and up upon against Morphe definitely not something you want to do because even after you go for this d5 now you just trade knights and up knight captures now you go for this very nice e5 just getting more of those squares and here only once now the bishop moves because now the d4 is definitely coming and after d4 and only now once knight moves you have a spectacular position and that too with Morphe being the white pieces I mean you're not surviving this game. But Morphe being Morphe, Morphe did not capture that. Instead, he went for this spectacular sacrificing another pawn and he goes for this b4. And here, nothing but the best thing is just to capture that pawn. So here, bishop capture was played, but just c3. And now we have bishop to a5, but just going for this bishop to c4. And here, all you have to do is just get the queen to b3 and it will definitely be a setup like the Evans Gambit, only with the f file being open and that will definitely be insane. But here, just bishop to b6 was played, but just d4. Just going for that central thrust, and we have e captures, c captures, and just this d6. And here, the best thing is just for this bishop to b2. And here, and even though Morphe has the spectacular bishop pair, and all of these pawns on the central squares, black is the one who's actually better in this position. And here, what black has to do is just go for this knight to f6. And he will be very much just not have any trouble in this position because even after knight to c3 now you go for this bishop to g4 and now after your castle you can see that there's a very nice pin along this file and even if just if you eliminate this knight you'll be able to win this pawn easily so here that's exactly what black will go for because after bishop caps on f3 g captures now you go for this bishop caps on d4 with check and only now once the king moves now you go for this knight to h5 going for this weak f5 f4 pawn and after bishop b5 now you go for this bishop caps on c3 and after bishop captures you play this knight caps on f4 and after g1, now you play the shook to g8, and, and only after bishop captures here, you have to ruin the queen side pawn structure as well. So black will have to keep the king in the center because black is the one who's up in material. So here, after bishop captures on c6, b captures, now you play queen to a4, just targeting that pawn. And only after queen to d7, defending, now you go for that g7 pawn that's been attacked two times. And now after bishop captures, now you go for this knight to h5, just attacking that bishop. And only after now, once the bishop moves. Now you don't trade the rooks. If you trade the rooks, then white gets a very nice rook in and there will be too much threat along the G file and you're gonna have to move the king and it will be a disastrous position against Morphe. So here rook G6, but now just E5. Just opening up the center because here the king is still in the center. So here after C5, asking for a queen trade. If the queens get traded off, it will be an easy draw. So here after queen to A3, not trading the queens, that's the best thing that you can do in this position. And after knight to F4, now you go for the C captures and after C captures you get the rook in the tempo. You get the rook in with the tempo, rook B1 check, and but just you have this spectacular defense with the knight, knight to e6, and black is doing fine. And fact black is the one who's better up in the material and is the one definitely winning this game. But well, good luck finding all of this against Morphe. Instead, what black went for for this f6, which is just a blunder in this position. It just opens up this bishop and it's just impossible to castle even if you get the knight in. I mean, but he just kept on plundering here. F5 was played by Morphe, but he went queen to e7, not even developing that knight and just blocking it with the queen. And here, just castles was played by Morphe, but just this bishop to b7, trying to cast queenside, but just this knight to c3. And here, queenside castle, but just this rook to e1. And now there's too much threats. You know that that e5 thrust is gonna be there anytime in the position. So here, queen to e8, better move will have been definitely this queen to f8, but what are you gonna do? So here, knight to d5 was played. But just this g6 and now after this knight caps on b6 a captures just queen to a4 just trying to infiltrate and go for that checkmate and the best way to avoid that is just not go with it with the knight to a5 but instead play this instead play this king to b6 and only after queen to a3 now you go for this queen to f8 and after bishop to c3 you go for this g captures and you don't want to recapture that because that would be a terrible terrible pawn structure with these isolated pawns so here instead what you want to do is you want to play this e5 
trying to open up the position and only after he captures now you trade the queens because the, there's tension between the queens so here queen captures rook captures and after d captures now you go for this knight captures and after knight captures knight captures rook captures and now you can see that there's very nasty discoveries here so you have to make some room for your rook so after h5 now you play this rook to d5 just attacking the bishop and also attacking the rook and the only way to get out of this is just to play this rook to h7 just defending that bishop and only after rook d1 just putting external pressure on that bishop now you play this b5 just attacking that bishop not moving your own bishop and after bishop captures bishop captures rook captures and after knight to e7 you can see that white has very nice rooks you can always get the rooks here double the rooks here or you can always double the rooks on the e file i mean it's a spectacular position for white and in moppy's hands it's definitely gonna be good but once again that was the best that dark had in this position but instead here lord cremon went for this knight to a5 attacking the queen but it just simply does not work and here just queen to a3 was played but just the c6 and the c6 move just completely completely blunders the game on the spot and here just bishop to d3 was played but just we have this queen to a3 and here Morphe is with the completely winning position there's nothing that you can do and there's pretty much nothing that you can do but there's just one thing that you have to find in this position so i'm gonna ask you to pause the video and try to find the move which gives you a spectacular limiting position while i give you a couple of seconds So congratulations to everyone who's able to find this move and the move is actually just this bishop to c3 just eyeing that knight and there's no place that you can move the knight to all the squares have been taken and now this is going to be a problem because if that bishop captures and queen captures then your king side becomes much much more weak so here just king to c7 was paid you can do nothing aside from that so here bishop caps on a5 but now not recapturing but here lord kumon went for this rook to a8 just spinning that rook but now the trouble is with this position that you can capture the b6 pawn with check so here bishop caps on b6 was played and now the king captures just rook a d1 check and here king to c7 and once again this is a spectacular way to end the game on the spot with this very nice queen to b4 and only after you go for this b5 you have played this queen to c3 and now you can see that this pawn will be easily can be captured because of this very nice pin so here after queen to b8 now you go for this a4 and now you cannot capture once again because of this bishop captures so here after b4 now you play this rook caps on e4 and only now once the queen moves now you play this king to h1 and here after knight to e7 now you go for this d5 just opening up further lines and as black you don't open up lines so here's c5 but now can you spot the move in this line i'm gonna once again i'm gonna ask you to pause the video because it's such a beautiful position so pause the video and try to find the accurate move in this position while i give you a couple of seconds and the move is the spectacular queen captures on f6 because here you cannot capture the rook if you go for the rook which is the c captures then your knight falls and only after queen caps on a4 now you go for this f6 just pushing that pawn and there's pretty much nothing that black can do about it to stop the pawn even if you go for this rook to e8 just attacking that queen i'm not gonna move the queen anywhere passive but first i'm gonna do is rook to c1 check and only once the king moves now i'm gonna gobble up the d6 pawn and only after rook c8 trying to exchange more pieces if you exchange more pieces then you're the one who's in material deficit so definitely you don't want to do that so here rook to b1 but just b3 and now you want to start pushing your own pass pawn as well so after f7 now you go for this bishop to b5 and only after you trade that bishop bishop captures queen captures and now after queen to e7 check and only after the rook blocks now you play this f8 queen and after rook captures queen captures you're the one who's up a whole night and these pass pawns i mean you're completely winning. there's no pretty much nothing can you can do but hey morphe played the other best move which is the queen to b3 but now just rook to b8 and this just further adds on to morphe's advantage because here the move that you wanted to play was this rook to a7 and no i'm not kidding yes you're gonna get this queen to b6 check but then the king can block with this king to b8 and there will be nothing that white can do or at least in the least or at least in the short run there's pretty much nothing that white can do and maybe you'll be able to survive this game if morphe doesn't find the right continuation but here lord cremon just went for this rook to b8 and just this queen to b6 check and after king to c8 Hey, hey, can you spot the move? The move is actually this beautiful bishop to a6. Just sacrificing that piece and this piece cannot be taken because this will be checkmate. So here after knight to e7, hey, just e5. Just opening up for the line. Only after d captures, now Morphe goes with this spectacular bishop caps on b7. And here after rook captures, queen caps on b7 to check, king to d8 was played. But now comes this d caps on e5. And it was on this move, on move 29, that Lord Cremont resigned the game. 
because there's pretty much nothing you can do if you go for this queen check and if you block with the bishop then these rooks come in the game you can push these pawn to d5 even if you block with the knight i can anytime i can just take the queen and get this rook into the game as well i mean it's just an awful awful position and white is winning anyhow and morphy won this game blindfolded with this spectacular play i mean it's just insane so yeah thank you all for watching i'll be coming up with another amazing game just go also stay tuned for that and i'll be seeing you guys very soon thank you all